Now, we are going to go down to talk to Adam Cherry, um, who is live at the TUC conference for us, um, to find out what's going on there. Are you there, Adam? Mm. Yes, you are. Hello. Adam, we're coming to you nice and quick. Just ki catch you on the op down there. Right, OK, TUC conference kicks off today. What are we expecting from them? Yeah, so we're here until Wednesday. Uh, Prime Minister here is, is here himself on Tuesday. Uh, really, it, it's an interesting one because on the one hand, this is the first TUC Congress uh, under a Labour government for 15 years. So there is a bit of a spring in the step of the people coming here. But on the other hand, the steps that the government are taking at the moment with cuts to the winter fuel allowance and, and, and the level of the pay rises that have been given to public sector workers, they want more on, on the latter point, and they're very concerned, they say, about the uh, winter fuel cut. So there's going to be a uh, proposal on that, on the, uh, an amendment on the uh, exhibition floor here, or rather in the main hall. They're going to vote on it. Uh, it's been backed by Unite, which is one of the biggest unions in the country. And it's being held, that uh, vote, on the same day that the Prime Minister is here. So it's not as if they're walking in lockstep entirely. There, there may be a bit of uh, confrontation here. Uh, it, it's hard to say at the moment because it, it doesn't really kick off until tomorrow, so it's fairly quiet for now. But I would expect that that will, uh, that will develop over the next couple of days. Uh, there was a press conference earlier today with the General Secretary, Paul Nowak, and he said he had, quote, real concerns about that cut. Uh, and it, not really much of a surprise, is it? Because this is being framed as a necessary step to fund those pay rises for public sector workers, which the unions here say don't go far enough anyway. Adam, sorry, when did you say we're expecting Keir Starmer to be there? Uh, that's on Tuesday. Right. And we have uh, Angela Rayner here tomorrow and, uh, and Ellie Reeves, the party chair, is here tonight. Right, because unusually for, for Labour Party ministers, and, uh, and they are going to get a hard time from the unions who, who literally support the Labour Party as well, aren't they? Well, that's what makes it strange, isn't it? Yeah, is that the first time in 15 years that this has happened, you would think it will be milk and honey from the taps, but actually mm. it's not because of the steps, the unpopular steps that uh, the Prime Minister says he's willing to take. Even today he said as much. So there, there is, uh, it will be strange to see how he handles that on Tuesday. But he will be gone by the time the vote on the winter fuel allowance is actually taken. So he, he doesn't have to suffer the embarrassment of being here whilst that kicks off. But nonetheless, the vote, is happening at the same, uh, the vote in the Commons is happening on the same day. So it will be an interesting one. Very interesting day. Um, thank you very much to Adam Cherry down in Brighton. Um, as the TUC conference kicks off, officially kicking off tomorrow, but Adam's obviously helping them set up. Um, OK, so oh, I've still my marvellous panel with me, um, Peter Edwards and Claire Muldoon. Peter, I'm going to come first to you on this one, given your Labour list, former I've editor. been to Cong Congress m many times. Yes, OK. And is it a fun place to be? I mean, do you have Angela Rayner getting up on stage and giving it large? Uh, well, the, the discos tend to be an evening. I'd say, much as I enjoy con Congress and then Labour Party conference, anyone who's been to any party conference of any type will say they're very hot, a lot of time in a suit, a bit of a lack of fresh air and a lot of food that looks slightly past its best. So it, it's one idea of fun. But, but let's go to the substance. It's very interesting to hear that discussion. I think there's, a, there's always a lot of myth-making around Labour conference and then TUC Congress. In cast your mind back to Tony Blair... Um, when Labour Prime Ministers, not leaders of the opposition, when Labour Prime Ministers go and address the unions, um, certain newspapers work themselves up into a lava with phrases like caving in or union paymasters, blah, blah, blah. There's only one stakeholder group that matters to a Labour Prime Minister, and that is called the electorate. And they derive a benefit from going to speak to the trade unions and sending a tough message um, about compromise and pragmatism and limited funds. And just as Tony Blair did that, I would expect to hear something similar from Keir Starmer. Because remember all this, and you know we've all got different views on some of the uh, policy stance, there's still a deficit of £87 billion that has to be reckoned with. OK, all right. Well, the front page of the Sunday Express, you know, some of the people paying for that will be pensioners. And the front page of the Sunday Express today are saying winter fuel storm is Labour's poll tax. I mean, we, we know that... What Keir's... a ludicrous comparison. Right. OK, why do you say that? The winter fuel allowance is a universal benefit that is paid to poor pensioners and it's paid to people like Lord Alan Sugar, a very successful businessman. And even people like Lord Sugar say it's ludicrous that he is in receipt of a universal uh, benefit like the winter fuel allowance when he's so well off. But this is going to affect 10 million pensioners in this country who will be expected to survive on many of them just over £11,500 a year. Uh, over 4,000 pensioners died of the cold last year. 
it's a real concern. And like, we've all got to be honest, you know, like the, the cold hurts you and the cold can kill you. And that's why I'd expect to see um, this policy evolve a bit for the budget, which is not for another seven or eight weeks on October 30th. Martin Lewis, a consumer champion who's not allied to a political party, suggested one tweak um, where you basically have means testing based around council tax bans. I, I think it will change a bit before the time Rachel Rees delivers her first budget. So you think it'll, they'll tweak it but not ditch it? Because, I mean, you've got up to 30 Labour MPs set to, to rebel. You've got the House of Lords even saying, we're going to try and block this and everything any way we can. So you think he will actually just tweak it rather than flip-flop, as Keir Starmer has done in the past? Well, for the reasons you set out, for two reasons. First of all, the political point is, you know, that was one of the few critiques that might have landed on Keir as leader of the opposition, that he changed his mind. In reality, everyone from Baroness Thatcher to David Cameron changed their mind. It's kind of a sign you have the mind. He does do it slightly more than uh, it has to be said. I don't think he'll change substantively on this, but, but it goes back to this other point that... You know, we all have different views again of the Tories and how they handled COVID, but, but there's a deficit of £87 billion. And from memory, we're spending more on debt interest, not the deficit, we're spending more on debt well, interest. Hold on, the deficit of £87 billion, what, what's that refer to exactly? So that means in each financial year, uh, the British government is spending £87 billion that it doesn't have, and it has to borrow that then from the right. markets. And the debt is the... Uh, the accumulation of all the deficits you rack up every year. So if you're overspending year after year, as British governments left and right have done, you end up with a large debt and then you pay interest on it as well, which okay. runs into billions. Right, OK. And then, and then Labour keep going on, we weren't aware of this, 20 billion, 21, 22 billion, whatever figure you want to believe, black hole. And, but yeah. everyone else was, but they weren't. Well, well, there's... I mean, I don't want to spend ages on that because we'll go down no, the cold no, no. But, but there's a political row over the 20 billion figure that Labour said did, quote-unquote uncovered. Uh, and I've got a lot of sympathy for that point of view because the Office of Budget Responsibility, these are people who are independent, um, they're a quasi-regulator, they're not tied to party politics, um, they can only do annual forecasts. So a new Chancellor coming in gets updated information that's not in the public domain. Right, OK. Uh, Claire, I mean, so Peter would have it tweaked? Yeah, but interestingly, Peter, you said that the Labour government is only is only focused on one thing, and that's the electorate who voted for them, I would say. And I don't think that that is the message that they've previously sent out to the trades unions and, and the trade unions in themselves. Think of ASLEF, think of the do junior doctors, think of whatever, because they have given them, the, I, I would say they've given in to them. So I don't think they've sent out any stern message at all other than they're a bit of a soft touch. Look, but you have to bear in mind that many NHS unions are not affiliated to the Labour Party. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, the government has given in to them and given in to their demands. No, it hasn't. It's very important to say that's wrong. Doctors demanded 35% for full pay restoration, i.e. they'd have the same pay in real terms as a decade ago. And Wes Streeting gave a one-word answer to that, which was no. But, Peter, they, they did give 15%. OK, it's, it's ratified over a certain number of years. However, the doctors have now come back as a counter-offer and said, actually, yeah, we'll take the 15%, but we're going to go on strike again until we get the 35 It's still an awful lot of money. And I'm sorry, but a train driver earning £70,000 working four days a week, when the rest of us have to scrimp and scrape, I'm sorry, I might actually become a train driver. A real thrill for you. Um, Pimlico Plumbers founder and self-made millionaire Charlie Mullins has said that he will look to sell his £12 million London penthouse and move his assets out of the UK in response to Labour's anticipated tax ambush. Remember, things can only get worse in next month's budget. This is just one of the many reports this week of wealthy business people planning to ditch the UK over plans to ravage the nation with with tax hikes. Why on earth are Labour suddenly, seemingly so determined to drive wealth and prosperity out of Britain? And have they actually done a risk assessment on this and how much it's going to cost the rest of us? So uh, let's talk to Charlie now. Um, thank you so much for coming in, Charlie. I really appreciate your time. Now, lots and lots of people have been getting in touch and they're looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Because, you know, you, you are literally quitting the UK. I mean, you, you know, you're a proud Brit, you love this country, but you've had enough. Yeah, well, I think, you know, like myself and many others, we've enough's enough and um, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm actually, you know, I'm not going to avoid tax, but obviously on the basis of what uh, Labour want to introduce about increasing capital gains from 20% to 40 or 45%, so they're going to cut your profit down by half. They're also talking about the inheritance tax that may go up to 40%. Um, yeah, I just think it's unacceptable. And I think that, um, you know, why, why 
why should we sort of work hard and, and let them waste all their money? And, and you have worked hard, Charlie. I mean, you grew up on the South London Council Estate. You founded Pimlico Plumbers, uh, which you sold for 140 million, I think it was. Wasn't I think it? a little bit less than that. A little bit less. Well, it was quibbling when you're in your millions. Um, and you paid um, 21, 22.1 million in capital gains tax and income tax on that, didn't you? Yeah, I think we're nearly 23. Yeah. yeah. So you're 23 not million. you're not you know a non dom. You you've no, paid look, your way. I've complied with the tax regulations. Uh, all my life since I've been, you know, since I'm born here, obviously. Um, and, and I'm not against it. I'm not against paying into the system. Mm. What I am against is the way the money's being used. And um, I'm just not prepared to put in any more. Uh, I, I know, knowing that it's just encouraging more and more people that shouldn't be in this country and we're not looking after our own type of people. Um, and, you know, people say I'm not patriotic, but, you know, for 55 years I've paid into the system, I've employed thousands of people, mm. 1,500 apprentices that I've trained and, uh, and pay, paid in. I mean, my accountants tell me that possibly over the years that I've paid in 100 million to the system. And I'm, I'm fine with that on the basis that, you know, business has been very good. But for these uh, people to say I'm not patriotic, it's just nonsense. And you're not alone, are you? I mean, you know, 9, 000, an estimated 9,500 millionaires are ready to quit the UK. A big, huge drain on the income tax. And your last income tax you're going to pay is going to be, what, January, I'm assuming? January, that's yeah. It. That's so it, yeah. The amount of money you've made that will be getting no more into the economy. Well, as you said, it's, 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 it's me and many others. You know, billionaire Alfie Best has done the same. Mm. And many other people, I won't mention their names, have gone... Um, you know, we don't need to stay here now. If we're creating wealth and, and putting in the pot and you're being penalised by the current government, then, you know, we can get up and go anywhere in the world and, 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 and not put up with it. I mean, you can go to Italy and uh, be registered there and only pay 100 grand a year tax. Um, you know, they, 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 act, they actually, government, think that they're going to bring in more revenue by doing what they're doing. The revenue will go down by 50% because they're just... You know, just driving people out of the UK. I mean, you know, I mean, I've already gone anyhow. You know, I'm not going to beat about the bush. I'm already gone. And uh, I'll just come back in now for visits and family. And um, we, I, I'm starting a new business, which launches October the 1st mm. here. But it's a family business. I'm not on the payroll, so I won't be paying nothing out of that. But they're complied with the tax regulations. Would you be starting that new business knowing what you know now? No, definitely not. Right, definitely not. I mean, we started the project probably two years ago. We had a three-year um, non-trading clause on us. and um, But no, certainly not. Definitely not. I mean, and again, and you know, I've said to my family that when the business is up and running, if we find that labour are too difficult and putting too many uh, hurdles in the way, then we just shut down and go to Dubai. Mm. I mean, we, we, they're, they're just not encouraging businesses and, and, you know, what with the new workers' rights and all this four-day-a-week nonsense and working from home and pick your own hours and, you know, call me this in the work, you know. I, we, I just can't comply with that, I'll be honest with you. I'm not against workers' rights. I'm not against it, but I'm just like a normal working-class guy like millions of other people, and it's just not how we've been brought up. It's just not the work ethics. And I think the, the, the workers' rights are, um, is being loaded more for the em employee and... When the employee's got more rights than the employer, then something's wrong. But of course they've got to have rights. I mean, uh, it's just that they're just overloading it. And, you know, I have to say all this nonsense that, you know, you want to be called this in the workplace. I'm not going to have, say, Eric the Bricklayer one week and then next week he wants Erica. to be Mary in yeah. call centre. Yeah. I mean, it just ain't going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, we're not going to have the working from home nonsense. We're not going to have people picking their own hours. Yes, we're going to be flexible. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a personal business and it'll stay in the office. Mm -hmm. And if, if on that basis that um, I can't keep people or, or, or want to keep these people with me, then, uh, then they go, let them go somewhere else. So, so the, the direction of travel of this country, where do you think it's going to end up? If we carry on like we are now. Well, do I think what? Where do you think we're going to end up uh, if the direction of travel yeah. carries on? Well, unfortunately, we're, uh, we're definitely going to be in recession, that's for sure. Yeah. And they talk about this 22 million uh, black hole that they've found. But if they, if they really want to be honest with it, evidently 9 billion of that is down to pay rises for the civil service. Mm. Um, so, so, you know, they're all looking after their own type of people. And I just feel Labour now uh, are just too much, you know what I mean? I mean, would, would I put Starmer and was it Reeves and the, and the other one, Rain or something, in charge of my business? 
The answer is no. <laughs> I mean, but they're running the country. You wouldn't have Keir Starmer running, you know, well, I w- running I your bath by the sounds of it. Well, I wouldn't put him in charge of a broom, if I'm being honest <laughs> with you. And that's being polite. Yeah. Um, you know, they're just absolutely, they're not for the working people. They're all for giving money for people that don't contribute this, nothing. This is what I'm confused about, Charlie, because when I grew up, uh, you know, my dad was a, a, a Labour rep. I mean, Labour were for the working classes. Do you think they've lost that? Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Obviously, the Conservatives haven't helped things. I mean, the last 14 years have just been atrocious. Uh, you know, Labour are just picking up on, the, on, on what they've given now, but let's not kid anyone, Labour are not for, for people that contribute to society. Charlie, totally, I mean, you have been accused of this many times in the... But, but you know, you are, a, you know, a working-class lad. You're proud of your country. You're proud of the flag. So you're leaving, though. You know, that isn't the most patriotic thing you could do. You're leaving poorer people who are going to be really struggling to, to, to pay their taxes and survive now. Yeah, look, look I, I totally agree with you, but, you know... Um... You know, I, I, I don't run the country. I can't sort of help everybody out. And, um, you know, that's for the government, really, to, to, you know, make jobs available, get training schemes mm. going, look after the but pensions. But you would say you were a patriot still? Sorry? You would say you were a patriot? Well, for, for all these years I, I've been here and, yeah. and, and, and have been, mm. but all of a sudden I've decided that enough's enough. So, I mean, you know, I'm not interested in what people think about... You know, the, I'm jumping ship and all this nonsense. Uh, I've contributed, you know, as much as I possibly can over the years. Um, and, you know, we still got, I'm still going to be involved with, with a charity, FA, uh, Shooting Star Hospice, that the company's still going to support. Um, but, you know, I'm just not going to contribute uh, into, the, into the pot no more. Charlie, we're running out of time, unfortunately. Are we really? Um, yeah, I know, it's, got, it's flies past, oh, isn't it? If you could just, just quickly sum up Labour's first two months in power in one broadcastable word, what word would it be? What on air? Yeah, broadcastable. Oh, broadcasting. <laughs> uh, what to say? A disaster. Disaster. That'll do. Thank you very much, Charlie Mullins. Thank, Thank you very much. A pleasure to talk to you, and good luck with the new company as well. Thank, Thank you. you.